Pancho! Bring your relay horse. That lad's due here any minute. Aye. I missed the mail package, Jim. No, he's due here right now, though. Got some mail? Who's hauling this right now? Jack Mason. And he really hauls it. It sure must be a tough job. I only covered 20 miles to get here. And that's a day's work when you're riding hard. <laughs> Jack pounds that saddle 50 miles a day. Day in and day out. Rain or shine. Hot or cold. And he always does it smiling. <laughs> Pacho, here he comes. Pancho. Did you, Jack? <laughs> Hello, Jim. Oh, Jack. You're right on the minute. Mason, this is Rattlesnake, one of the Bar T boys. Hello, Rattlesnake. Glad to know you, Mason. I heard you was a top hand. Well, thanks. How's the trail since the big washout? It's not bad. A few bumps here and there, and a few new cutoffs. How's your old pal, Pochi? I haven't seen him in a dog's age. Oh, he's fine, Jim. He's driving the stage between Tucson and the border. Hmm. I'm going to see him this afternoon and ride the last 20 miles with him like a gentleman. <laughs> so long, fellas. So long. <laughs> that is my connections. My friend, do not take the Anderson cut off today. See? Why not, Pancho? I have word. The Indians, they are very mad. Well, that tribe's been all right for two years, Pancho. You must have heard wrong. One of the tribe was murdered near the Pelini Saloon last night. Oh, yeah? Yes. And I'm afraid they will try to destroy the mail to get even. Please, senor, do not go over the mountain today. Stand the desert. Forget it, Pancho. But thanks anyway. See?
a native of Sunset, friend? No. Business. You? Traveling salesman. Whiskey. You have a little drink? No, thank you. Didn't I see you on the train coming from El Paso? Perhaps I came from El Paso. You live in Sunset? No, I'm going there to work. What is the name, my friend? There's a horse from trying to overtake it. Oh, that's my good friend, Jack Mason. We ride together to sunset. I'm so glad to see you. <laughs> hey, I thought it was supposed to be at the station, no? Yes? Yes, but some Indians changed my mind for me. Passengers. Oh, a quiet one, a drunken one, and a lovely lady. Oh, a lovely yeah. lady, huh? There's only one thing what I don't like. I find something out. She's going to work in Polini's saloon at sunset. Oh, I see. That's bad. Yeah, that's very bad. We stop here for feed, please. to eat? No, thank you. I'm not hungry. All right. Hello, Rusty boy. It's your turn next, you rascal. boy. Come here. I didn't forget you. There's your card. Come here. Glad to see me? Now you stop playing around. seems to be quite an understanding between you. Well, there are times when he must have his own way. You carry the mail? That's right. And you? <laughs> Nothing quite so important. You're a dance hall girl, aren't you? Why, no, of course not. What gave you that idea? Well, aren't you on your way to Sunset to work for Polini? <laughs> yes, but I'm to work in his restaurant. He doesn't own a restaurant. He runs a saloon. Somebody's fooling you. Oh, I see. You ready, Denver? Sure. Polini is my friend. I'll introduce you. Polini is always interested in a good buy and whiskey. Would you rather ride on top, miss? It might be more pleasant for you. Thank you.
buck. All clear inside, Polini? Sure. Go into my office. These tens is fine. Lugo did himself proud. Uh, just a little too much red in these twenties. But they'll pass. things at the ranch. Oh, all right, but Lugo's yelling for that green ink. Yeah, don't worry, he'll get it. Duke Evans is on his way out, and he's bringing plenty of supplies. Duke Evans? When did he get out of the pen? Uh, about a month ago. And he's the best man in our game, too. I, uh, I invited him to cut in, eh? but uh, lightly. He's don't affect nobody's share but me. He's got a reputation for double-crossing, boss. I'll handle it, Duke. You see, our business is growing. And I don't can increase the output without more supplies. That's where Duke comes in. He's the best die and a thread man in our game. Get it? Let's drift over to the stage office. It's about due. And a, a friend of mine is uh, sending a gal here to work in my uh, restaurant. Her name is Martin. Hiya, Jack. Well, Polini, how is everything? Hello, Duke. Glad you came. Meet my friends here, Buck and a Squint. I beg your pardon, but uh, you Miss Martin. Yes. I'm Joe Polini. How do you do? I have a letter of introduction. Oh, you come to work for me, yes? No. The lady has changed her mind, Polini. Listen, Portuguese. You keep your nose out of this. See? Oh, the slogan of the stagecoach company is, we guarantee safe delivery. You savvy, Polini. <laughs> Take it easy, Polini. This happens to be a free country, Mr. Polini. People come and go as they wish. Make their own decisions. This lady has changed her mind. But I... Surely you wouldn't question that. But I... I'm afraid I don't understand this. Yeah, that's the trouble. You don't understand. But I think I do. There's a very nice restaurant next door. Shall we go? Oh, but I... It's right next door. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> hey, what's the matter with me? How do I let him get away with that? Relax. What's another woman in your life? I don't like them two pony pushers. Will you gentlemen kindly tell me what this is all about? I didn't change my mind about anything. Well, you see, Miss Martin, after I talked with you, I figured you were a mighty nice girl. And nice girls don't work in places run by Polini. Thanks, mister. I see now. But I like to make my own decisions. Well, I felt someone should butt in. You were being fooled, you know. Oh, that's fine. And it was good of you, but uh, what am I supposed to do now? Eat? Sleep? And in the morning, take the stage back home. Yeah. I haven't any home. My folks are dead. 
Home is wherever I happen to be working. And now, thanks to you gentlemen, I'm not working. Miss Martin, wait. Let's eat. I've got a great idea. <laughs> well, that's always a good idea. Come on. Yes, come on, please. Hello, Blondie. I have been going out my strong mail package. You stop your kidding, Blondie. We'll go someplace else. Sure, I can picture you two birds riding 20 miles for a beef stew. <laughs> Not when you, Senorita Blondie, make the best beef stew in all Arizona. <laughs> Why, you, you bother me. Oh, you just say this don't make me feel good. <laughs> Pardon me, I'll be right back. Blondie. How are you fixed to use some help? I mean a waitress. How will I pay her? This joint ain't breaking even now. Shh. You've got the dyes, Duke? Right here. There's more coming. Joe, I've made a contact to unload 50,000 right away. Shh. Don't talk business here. Well, you found the job. Helping Blondie here. Ten bucks a week. Oh, thanks. Oh, Blondie, you're a great girl. <laughs> Don't give me that. Just give me your order. Well, you folks go ahead and eat. I've got to make a report to the sheriff, and I'll be back later. Where are you from, honey? Blondie, how's the beef stew? Quiet, you. El Paso. Hmm, El Paso's a good town. Tell me more, dearie. That old codger. He's a whiskey salesman. Probably make a good buy. You get him drunk enough. Oh, Porter! Porter, this is my friend Joe Polini. I've told him about you. Are you, Polini? Fine. You join us? No, thanks. I'll be in the sea in a day or so. We might be able to do a little business. So long. Some place I have seen him before. Some place. Come on, let's get out to your ranch. I want to see Lugo and get this dye mixed. Hello, Pat. Have you seen the sheriff tonight? He's due here any minute. Say, you act like you're in trouble. What's up? Plenty. I understand one of the Apache tribe was killed here in town last night. He was. Near Polini's. How? Found him in the alley with a bullet in his back. And the sheriff ain't found no trace of the killers. Not bad. Yeah. Evening, gents. Hello, Sheriff. Been waiting for you, Dawson. I heard you was looking for me. That Apache tribe up on the ridge tried to get me today. It looks like we're in for trouble. I'm afraid so, Jack. Can you figure any reason for that killing last night? No, for the time being, I'm stumped. And we was getting along real well with them Indians, too. Only the other day, the one that got killed traded me some cornmeal for one of them there dolls. Seems as if he wanted it for his little girl. Someone had a good reason for killing that Indian. And we've got to find out who it was. Is Postmaster here? How about lending me your mail packer for a spell? I can't afford it, deputy. Well, it's all right with me if... Jack wants to help you. Well, sure. And besides, until things cool down a bit, I'd rather make my runs at night. What do you figure we should do? First, square those Indians. Or you're liable to have this whole town burned down. Someone has to talk fast to them. And that's a job. I think I can do it. I know a half-breed called Pancho. He'll get me to them. Good evening, gentlemen. May I come in? You are in. That's right, I am in. I mean, uh, can I break in on your conversation? I know this gentleman here. You're the mail rider. 
Say, what is this? Who are you? Does the name Frank Porter suggest anything to you? Go ahead, keep talking. I'm from Washington. Is that clear? That's the word I've been waiting for you to say. <laughs> Glad to know you, Porter. Been looking for you every day for a week. <laughs> These boys all right? Sure. <laughs> boys, Frank Porter is a Secret Service man. What? Well, you fellas certainly work mighty funny. Why, I didn't even know you were coming. I did. They notified me to cooperate in every way. You see, I'm postal, which means federal. And you're only a small county sheriff. <laughs> Mr. Porter, would you mind letting us in on this? Why are you here? My boy, the greatest spread of counterfeit money the country has ever known is on. And it's coming from this quiet little town of Sunset. coming, men. All right. I've got the reds mixed. Lugo's working on a new dye for the 20s. Joe, better keep an eye on outside. We've got to work fast, Duke, to make that sale. Let me see the plate. Pancho, didn't Polini buy a cattle ranch up here someplace? Si, senor. He went to the ranch. We will pass it when we come around the next bend. Does he run much stock on it? No, senor. He buy a cattle ranch, but he no seem to run any cattle. Welcome. That is the Pelini place. You fellows wait here. I'm going to have a look at that place. Lenny might want some cattle. Be right, right here, my friend. <laughs> well, it's the best one you've done, Lugo. Thank you. Hey, Pelini. That mail carrier Jack Mason's coming up here. Close that up. Tell him there's nobody here. Get rid of him. Howdy, is Pliny around? Nope. Nobody here but me, mister. Thanks. So long. Gone, but he did a funny thing. Picked up a little doll and put it in his saddlebag. What do you mean, a doll? Say, that engine had a doll with him the night I caught him snooping around here. This Mason's getting too close to our business. Yeah, he's just another cowboy. Don't be too sure. He's got me worried. If he ever find out we kill that Indian, he make plenty trouble. I'll see that he's no problem.
Pancho will meet us here. I hope he can arrange a meeting with those Indians before they get too tough. How'd you make out, Pancho? They will make the talk with you at the mouth of the canyon. Good, let's ride over. Hey. But because one of your people was murdered, that doesn't give you the right to make war on everybody. But lawmen do nothing. So we fix our way. The lawman is trying to find out who did it. But you mustn't break your promise to keep peace because one of my people did. All I'm asking you is not to harm innocent people. Don't make war. You find white men who kill? I'll do my best. You make promise to great father? When you find man, you bring him to me? I promise. We keep peace for three sundowns. That's a bargain. After that, look out. Did you ever see this before, Pat? Door. That's the one I traded the Indian. Where'd you get it? The Polini's ranch. I got a hunch the Indian stumbled onto something at Polini's ranch. They jumped him, but he got away. Came back to town, and Polini fixed him up. I was told the Indian was looking for me that night. Jack, do you think I ought to round up Pellini and his gang and sweat them? Well, that might upset Mr. Porter's plans here. You're right. My plans are more important to the country than one man's life. Well, if you're so sure that Pellini's your man, Porter, why don't you crack down on him for everything? Well, not so fast now, Sheriff. Getting Pellini is only part of it. My job is to get and destroy the plates he uses. That's the real menace. Get it? I guess you're right. What's our next move? I'll start hunting for the plates. In the meantime, watch every shipment of mail that goes out. Hey, I forget to remember. It's time I drive the coach to Tucson, yes? Goodbye, my friends. Is the meal ready, Pat? Sure, here it is. I'll haul it tonight, after I eat. Sister, how's tricks? Swell looking a girl like you is certainly wasting time in a quiet joint like this. Why don't you eat in your own joint? You afraid you get poisoned? Well, hello, honey. Where have you been all my life? Out of it, thank goodness. You interest me, Blondie. Well, you don't seem to interest her. Why don't you stick to the business of eating? It's healthier. Why don't you stick to your own business? It's a smarter. And get this through your head. Joe Paulini don't like to be pushed around, see? I think I see. Well, then why don't you get moving? Oh, uh, no place for ladies, dearie. Just a little misunderstanding, Sheriff. This is all straightened out now. Is my mail ready, Pat? Sure thing, Jack. I'm sorry, Blondie, but repairs are on me. Good night. Good night. Huh. Why, I'll blast that mason fell right out of his boots. Not here in town. If he was a shot now, they would know I did it. 
Why not get him on his mail route and do it quietly? That's it. Do it that way. That's him coming. He's headed for Polino's ranch. Get upstairs, quick! Reach. Buck! Split! Who's this man? What's he doing here? What's wrong, Buck? Shut up, Lugo. We've got to get rid of him. The river? Give me a lift.
Rusty. Lie down, Rusty. Lie down, Rusty. Lie down, Rusty. How about Mason? You can forgive him. Here are the new 10s and 20s, Bellini. These are beautiful, Lugo. You know your business. How about my ink and thread? Don't I get any credit? Without the government plates I stole, we couldn't do a thing. Forget it. Now to make delivery and collect. And how are you going to deliver? By mail. The same as I've always do it. It's safer. You don't mean you'd use the mails. Why not? It's taking too big a chance. Well, you're putting evidence right in their hands. It's been successful for a long time now. Maybe so. But you can't fool with the mails, Polini. You get away with it forever. Wrap it up the same as always. Why don't you let me deliver it to the gang for you, Joe? No, dude. It goes by mail. Have you seen anything of Jack Mason this morning? No, I ain't seen nobody this morning. You'd think this place had smallpox. Want some breakfast? No, not now. Say, don't they eat in this town anymore? If Mason comes in, will he ask him to come over to Pat's place? Well, if you see him, tell him his little protege took a run out on us. Nice uh, gal, huh? Well, let's not bother about her. He'd probably be back. I still say you're doing it wrong. Polini, what will I do with these plates? What for you bring these here? Well, I got worried. I, I feared we were being watched. These go back to the ranch. And will you stop worrying? I'm handling these the best way. Uh, Lugo, mail these. What do you want? I wanted to work for you, Mr. Polini. You see, the pay at the restaurant isn't very much, and I wondered if your job was still open. Sit down. How long were you standing there? Come on, Pat. I never before in my life see somebody so slow like you. All right, I'm coming. There they are. How soon does the Overland Mail go out? Goes in 20 minutes. Good. I have changed my mind. I do not want to send those packages. Sorry, mister. Once I stamp them, they're out of my hands. I've seen him before, but I can't figure where. Why, he's been around town for some time. So? I won't have for you. you I'll tell trouble? you later. Mr. Porter, I located those stolen plates. But this morning when I went back, they were gone. Say, Jack, maybe this is what you're looking for. A man just mailed them. Was he a stocky, gray-haired man? Yeah, that's him. 
Take off the lid, Forty. What do you think, Mr. Porter? Counterfeit. But where are the plates? Well, they must be in town and we'll find them. Sister, talk up. What's your game? But I haven't any game, really. Clean 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 Get that girl out of here. I must talk to you alone. Go ahead and talk. It's Saunders. He's here. The one that calls himself Porter. Saunders? The government man? Are you sure? I knew I had seen him somewhere before. I saw him. And Mason is back, too. Mason? You told me he was dead. I did. There's something wrong. What do we do now, Polini? Now, take it easy. Take it easy. I've gotten out of worse jam than this. Buck, get out there and cut those telegraph wires. Right. Wrap it up and send them both to the mail as evidence. And telegraph headquarters to pick up the gang at both addresses. All right. wire must be dead. It is. They've just cut it. We better take them now, Mr. Porter. I guess you're right, sir. I'll need a gun. I'll be right back. We gotta get out of here. If we can get to the border, we're safe. How do we get there? I'll figure it out. You say I'll figure it out? But how? I don't, I don't want to get mixed up with these government men. How are you going to figure it out? How? Oh, don't lose your head. I'll force the thing. We've got to get that money shipment out of the mail. Then there is only one man who could hang us. Mason, for killing that Indian. Let me take care of him. Where's Mary? Why, she double crossed you, Jack. She ran to Pauline the minute your back was turned. Pauline? Sure. Keep out of the way, Blondie. There's going to be fireworks any minute. What, again? The wires are down. Good. Mason's in his room at the hotel. Cover the Duke. And see that you don't miss this time. Trouble you for your gun. Where'd that come from? Keep Polini's place covered. This is a freeze out. We'll show him. You're staying with us.
over there. All right, men. I'm coming up. You'll know me, men. I'm in business. Hold it. He'd kill her in a second. What's she doing, Ed? I sent her in. She's working with me. I got those plates we wanted. They're right here in my bag. Yeah. Those plates we wanted? Yes, we. Mary has been working on this case for a year. And now, men, if you remember, I made a promise that I must keep. You mean to the Indians? Well, that's all right with me. How about you, Mr. Porter? Mary, let's you and I go and have a cup of coffee, eh? I've got to do some tall talking to the boss when I don't bring in my prisoner. You know, we'd have hanged Polini anyhow. Say, those Indians saved the state money. Say, that's going to be my talking point at the next election. Have a cigar? No, thanks. I don't vote here. <laughs> but while this job of hauling mail isn't the best, it's interesting. I've met some nice people. Thank you. I've saved some money and I've got a good ranch. I know you'd like it. Are you proposing to me? Say, I guess I am. That's all right. <laughs> 